Hey, I'm excited to share this one with you. Uh, Google has a really cool tool that's going to help you identify windows of time where you may have spikes and conversions that Google wouldn't otherwise um, be able to understand. So this is going to be really helpful for advertisers that have multifaceted marketing methods. So, you know, you're running like uh, events or promotions or, you know, you're, you're bringing traffic from somewhere else or you're doing like, you know, uh, guest spots or, or whatever. I'll, let me show you what I'm talking about and then the way to use this will make a lot more sense. Um, Google calls this seasonality adjustments. I hate this name. I think it's so stupid. Because as you'll go on to read, and they've got uh, an article here, Google's help article, um, smart bidding already manages seasonal events. So if, you know, let's say that you're selling sporting equipment or whatever, and, you know, summer's a little bit better and winter's a little bit, um, you know, kind of a, has a downturn, Google's going to understand that and make adjustments for it. Uh, where these seasonality adjustments really come into play is if you're going to have short events, and Google says one to seven days, um, where you're going to have major changes to your conversion rates. And major changes, by the way, it means big spikes, but it also might mean big drops too. So, you know, your inclination as an advertiser to, is to use this if you're going to have spikes. But I think that using it when you have drops is really helpful because it will protect you from Google getting too reticent with your campaigns if you know that a drop is coming for whatever reason. Um, anything more than seven days... Um, and, and Google says, what do they say? They may not work as well if you use them for extended periods more than 14 days at a time. Um, which I actually think that gets a little bit aggressive. I'd, I'd recommend sticking to that one to seven day window. Uh, here's the problem. That's not a seasonal event. That's like, you know, that, that, they, they should have called these event-based adjustments, not seasonality adjustments. So, and the reason I'm making such a big different or such a big deal out of this is because I think nomenclature is important. And the, what you, the way you name things kind of ends up impacting the way that people choose to use them and how you think about them. So if you hear seasonality adjustment, I don't want you to think like, oh, I don't have a seasonal business because that's not what this is at all. Um, this is if you're going to have uh, any catalytic event that's going to impact your conversion rate up or down. Um, and I really do mean up or down, by the way, uh, uh, which I'll get into here in just a minute. So let me show you how I got here, first of all. You're going to go to Tools, uh, under Shared Library, go to Bid Strategies, and then uh, under Portfolio Strategies, you're going to see Advanced Controls, and this brings us to Seasonality Adjustments. Now, a couple of notes. It only works, Seasonality Adjustments are currently available for search shopping and display campaigns and are only compatible with Target ROAS, Target CPA, Bid Strategies, and, and Smart Shopping Campaigns. I would anticipate this expanding because Google's expanding a lot of its tools to uh, other bidding strategies, um, but at the moment we're we're limited. So just FYI, um, the seasonality adjustment is is uh, limited uh, based on bid strategy. So if you're you know not using these bid strategies, then you're not going to be able to use this tool. Um, but again, I, I think that they're probably going to blow this up a little bit. So keep that one to seven day timeline in mind. Um, and in order to build uh, an adjustment, it's actually it's really easy. Well, let me talk about why you do this first. Um, if you're going to run like a, a massive promotion, a big event, let's say you're running an online challenge and you just know like, man, at the end of this challenge, I'm going to end up with a huge spike in, in um, uh, conversions. Now, this is the thing to think about. It's if you're going to get a big spike in traffic, but your conversion rate stays the same, you don't want to use this. This is only if you're going to have a change in conversion rate. And what you're really doing is you're drawing a box around a certain timeline and you're letting Google know, hey, bro, the, the, what you're used to seeing is going to change inside of this box. And I want you to be real careful about um, applying the learning lessons that you've captured to subsequent timelines. Because imagine if we didn't do this, and this has happened. Let's say you didn't do this. You run a great big event, have a great big promotion, whatever. Google sees a huge increase in your conversion rates. What's going to happen is algorithmically Google's going to get more aggressive. It's going to say, oh, conversion went up. That means I can afford to spend more for traffic. And now you have a machine learning mechanism who's flying off the handle thinking that your conversion rate has improved significantly. And it puts you at a disadvantage because if your conversion comes back down, you know, the event ends, the offer ends, the sale ends, the promotion ends, whatever. Now Google is going to take time in order to learn that lesson and, and backpedal. Um, and then Google's backpedaling, if you've ever been on the receiving end of that, ends up almost always being an overcorrection, which actually kind of makes sense because Google doesn't know where it went wrong, right? And so it kind of it kind of encapsulates sort of Alamos a little bit, and then you have to deal with that that pulse that you've probably seen with machine learning, where it kind of pulses out, uh, oversteps its bounds briefly just to learn, and then and then comes back in, and then pulses out and comes back in. So you want to avoid having to re-enter kind of that learning phase. So if you're going to be doing anything, and this is the other thing too, it's really hard for me to give you all the reasons that your conversion rate might change because 
like it's all the reasons, right? You know your business way better than I do. Um, you might be changing prices, you know, liquidating products, whatever. But um, or you know, maybe you're just doing a great big media blitz. You, you, you're you're advertising through different mechanisms that Google might not necessarily be aware of, and you know your conversion rates are going to go up up until that you know that end. So. What you're going to do is you're going to say, hey, Google, I want to make an adjustment. Now, one really important note is to make sure that you're choosing the right timeline. And I'm going to talk about that in just a second. But real quick, we're going to name it. So I'm going to say uh, big sale. And uh, incidentally, I'm, I'm, I think Google uses some levels of nomenclature um, in, order to, in order to inform itself. I don't think there's anything here just yet that we need to worry about. But I, I would guess, and if I'm right about this, somebody make a comment on this video and talk about how smart I am. Uh, I would guess that we end up with a category. At some point, Google's going to add a drop down for the category for the event. And don't, if that happens, and it might not, I've been wrong about most things in life, but if that happens, don't ignore, spend some time choosing the right category. Because just like when you're labeling conversion events, uh, I think that Google uses that in order to determine how to use this data and this information. It's trying to reverse engineer, you know, the common denominators around events that people are using and what it means and what it impacts. Um, so, you know, there'd be a big difference between, um, you know, uh, off-site promotion, uh, event, sale, etc. So if you end up with the category drop-down after this video, um, you know, when Google begins making improvements to this, then, then spend some time on that. Um, then we're going to choose our, our start date, uh, which... This is so uh, worth spending some time on. You're looking for the seven-day window where your conversion, where your conversion rate is going to change. The thing to do here is be strategic. So let's say that you're running an online challenge, which is one of the things, by the way, that I think could like really impact conversion rates potentially, especially if you have like an offer that you wouldn't normally have, um, or you know you're, you're you're closing the cart in a certain facet that um, you know on that specific offer, um, whatever. If you're running this challenge your inclination might be, oh, well, the challenge starts on the 1st and it ends on the 7th, so I'm going to go the 1st to the 7th. The problem with that is, is if your cart doesn't open on the challenge until day 3, right, and you know because you've run other challenges that people generally don't start buying until day 5 or 6 towards the end of the, the tenure of the challenge, then you want to build this date range around when you know your conversion rates are going to change. Again, this is uh, use seasonality adjustments only if you expect major changes to conversion rates. So be really careful about using this for spikes in traffic or you know other KPIs that just might not be relevant or necessary. So choose the date range that you think is most applicable here. And I'm, I'm just choosing one at random um, so we can keep going. Next thing is the scope. This is actually really cool. Um, you can choose the campaign type to apply this to. So you can say all the campaigns in my account that are you know all my search campaigns. Um, and the reason you would adjust this, by the way, is because the conversion event that you're worried about changing uh, isn't applicable to certain campaigns. So, like, you know, let's say that your display campaign isn't isn't um, isn't marketing that specific conversion event for whatever reason. You've got it split out for a different conversion event. Then the in increase or decrease in conversion rates doesn't apply. So uh, choose the campaign types that it applies to, or if you want to, if you have like granular conversion events and you know that the, the, the conversion is only going to spike for, you know, a specific campaign, you can actually choose the specific campaign. Um, here's what I'm honestly a little bit confused by. And if you're watching this and you know the answer, I'd love, 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 I'd love, love, love your opinion. This feels stupid. I have no idea why. And now, now, hear me. It's smart bidding. Okay. Smart bidding is meant to make these decisions for us. It's why smart bidding exists. You're actually losing dimensions of analysis when you're using smart bidding. It's weird that Google would let us make device-based adjustments in this particular context. If it already knows the dates and it already knows, roughly speaking, the conversion event or the campaign the conversion applies to, I don't trust myself enough to to guess or prognosticate it, the device type that this would apply to. I mean, I don't know, man. Like, if you're running, like, a mobile-only... If you're running, like, a mobile-only promotion, maybe, or you've got, you know, the events only is firing on desktops or what? I don't know. I don't know. So if you have a better idea as to how this would be used, I'd love to hear it. Right now, this is... I'm normally, like, pissed that Google doesn't give us all the options, right? Because they've been narrowing down all the options so much. This is one of those times where I'm just like, man, why would you... Why would you open that up? That feels like, I don't know. It just doesn't feel aligned with what it is that we're doing here. We're trying to inform the machine learning mechanism where there's going to be algorithmic influences to conversion rates. It's stupid to think that you would silo that 
um, because it needs all the data in order to see what, what impact has been made. So I would just caution you against removing anything unless you have a really strong reason why. And again, I, and I really mean this, if somebody has, you know, if you can think of something that I'm not thinking of, please drop it in the comments. You'll improve me and everybody else. Um, so now this is where, this is tough. Enter an esti uh, estimate based on expected conversion rate changes. So what Google is saying, how much bigger and better do you think this is going to get or how much worse do you think this is going to get? Um, first of all, like I said earlier, don't ignore a decrease. Uh, a potential decrease in conversion will get Google to begin backing down on your bids and could potentially you know, hurt your, your uh, campaign performance in the future. So if you've got, um, you know, if you're coming up and you just know like, hey, my conversion rates are going to drop because of X, add this because it protects you from you know, Google pulling back too far. Uh, the problem here is how to guess at conversion rates. And I'm trying to think about if I would have like a really good rule of thumb for you. And the truth is, is I think the very first time this happens, you really do just have to guess. And then every subsequent time you're gonna be informed by the previous event. And so if this is something that's happening on a regular or semi-regular basis, you'll start getting smarter as you run them. Um, but otherwise it's so hyper dependent upon the event. Um, you know, here's Google's example. If you expect conversion rates to increase by 50% during a three-day sale, add up to 50% conversion rate adjustment. This adjustment will help optimize your bids. So, you know, I guess, you know, if you, let's say that you have a product that normally sells for X and you're about to mark it down to Y, uh, you can begin to kind of intuit the percentage increase according to how good of an adjustment that is and how ravenous people are for that particular product. Um, but again, I feel like that's a guess. Um, Because this is an estimate, I think you're I think you're actually okay not obsessing over this. I think what Google's going to look at more than anything is the time and not necessarily the conversion rate adjustment as much. Obviously, they want it or they wouldn't be asking for it. But I think that the time block is going to be the most helpful. And if you're over or under uh, a little bit, you know, hopefully Google's building that into the logic here. So, um, again, the very first one, guess at. And then on subsequent um, campaigns, you we'll have more information. Um, so, you know, here's Google saying an estimated conversion rate 5% will come 7.5%. So, oh, now they're just teaching me rudimentary math. Thank you, Google. Uh, use the decrease option only if you expect a sudden drop in conversion rates for a few days. You don't need to adjust the conversion rate downward after sales or promotions because smart bidding ought adjusts automatically normal conversion rates. Okay, cool. So once that's done, save. I'm not going to save that because this is a live account and I don't actually want it to live. Uh, make sure you read Google's um, their, their FAQs, their support documents, by the way. Uh, and I don't just mean for this, I just mean in general, like, you know, folks like to skip that and, and go click around. One of the things that I think is really important about Google support documentation isn't just what they say, it's what they don't say, because it gives you a sense as to where they're trying to lead you. And then you get to intuit why. So, um, I feel like I get a lot out of those, but I hope this is helpful to you and for you. Uh, this is a really cool resource. And it also lets you know that Google's thinking about their blind spots. If you're a machine learning mechanism and you're running everything algorithmically, it would make a lot of sense for you know them to step up and say, okay, we're not gonna have all the data all the time, especially in the analog world. Why don't we give people the opportunity to tell us whenever there's gonna be an analog impact? And then we can make adjustments accordingly. So I think this is a really cool move and you know something that could, uh, that could stave off catastrophic error, especially if you're going to have great, great, great big spikes um, up. I think I think drops will be a little bit more survivable because you know Google pulls back a little bit, but you know it's going to continue. Their job is to continue to try to find expansion opportunities. Um, not to say that you shouldn't use it for decreases. I think you absolutely should. I'm just saying that if you were to skip one, the decreases where I'd skip the increases where things get really dangerous. Because if you have a massive spike in conversion rates and then Google tries to live into that paradigm and it ends up uh, suddenly and Google doesn't know you know, where that's going to happen or why, um, you could save yourself significantly, especially if you have a great big expense. Uh, yeah, I hope this is helpful. Um, would love to hear what you think. If anybody's using this actively, where you're using it in what context. I feel like this is one of those tools that Google's provided that requires a little bit in the way of creativity. So, um, you know, if, you, if you've got this deployed, I'd, I'd love to hear where and why. Uh, I shoot a video every day. So this is your first time at the channel. Go ahead and subscribe uh, only if you want to. Um, that's all I got. Thanks for watching, y'all. I'll see you next time.